Welcome to this DMP Challenge Feedback Video Academy series, where we're going to be looking at cloning trees from the right side of the frame to the left side of the frame and all the techniques to achieve that successfully. Because the Map Painting for Filmmakers project is all about skill building, these feedback videos are broken up into three sections. First, we're going to look at the plate as our only reference for this DMP challenge. We'll identify all the photographic cues that make these trees look photoreal and integrated. Then we're going to evaluate your work, seeing if it holds up to what we've observed in our plate. And lastly, I'm going to be teaching you three different techniques for integrating these trees in the demonstration section. It's a bit longer than what we've done in other DMB challenges, so make sure you stick around to the very end. So for this observe section, I'm not using any other photography because all we need is here in the plate. And we don't have extra photography that we're going to be putting in. We're going to be taking these uh, trees right here and putting them over here and trying to change them up. So what we need to do is I take a close look at the existing trees in the plate and try to identify some of their qualities. First thing uh, that you'll see is that all of these trees are unique. I don't see any repeating of the same tree. Some of them look similar. Like if you take a look at this tree right here and this tree right here, it actually looks quite similar in shape and size, but there's a different pattern on the inside here. So I'm not seeing any repeating of any of these trees. They're all unique. Also, if we were to look at the lighting direction, we can see that there are some trees over here. There, it's like over the shoulder, right? And the lighting direction changes on this plate because it's such a wide stitch. You can see the distortion of the plate. So this right here goes swoops down and goes through there. So this is actually a straight line, but because it's been stitched together, um, it's curving it. So really, we do have a change in lighting direction on this plate. So if you're working with really large images, panoramas, you have to be aware that the lighting direction does change as you move around the image. So if you look at these trees over here. These are very front lit right there. And uh, these trees over here are being side lit. So just the distance between this point and this point, there's a pretty big, um, there's a pretty big lighting direction change, even from this point to this point, because these are over the shoulder kind of uh, light coming through, and these are being side lit. So lighting direction is important. So if I'm going to be putting trees, taking trees from here and putting them here, I'm going to have to split the difference between these two different lighting directions. And the tricky thing about this plate is that there's nothing here to give you cues as to the lighting direction. So you kind of have to make it up. You have to improvise the lighting direction. The next thing that we can take a look at is the shadows, or are the shadows. Um, and if you take a look down here, the shadows that I'm most concerned about here are the ones on the ground. And uh, so you can see the distance of these shadows. Um, you can see how sharp those shadows are. And uh, the things, the qualities that I'm able to identify here is that they are, um, that it's kind of, um, it's hard to tell which uh, shadow goes to which tree. When you get them all packed in like this, it's kind of hard, with the exception of this one, but then it's like these group of trees makes this shadow. So not all the shadows are representative of a single tree. They are representative of a lot of trees all put together, and then these shadows kind of like merge together. So that's my first observation about um, these shadows. The other observation is that um, the closer the shadow is to the base of the trees, the darker the shadow is. So if I look here, you can see how dark these shadows are down here. And then I get farther out, and this shadow value is lighter. Okay, So closer, because what you're getting is you're not just getting a shadowing from this object, but you're also getting this occlusion shadow that's happening. So when these two surfaces are meeting, that's where it's going to be the darkest shadow. And as the shadow goes out, there's a bunch of light 
that uh, from the from the sky that kind of uh, gets into that shadow and lifts the values of that shadow. So it's not going to be as bright out there. So that's my second observation is that it's darker towards the base. My third observation is how uh, how these shadows are put onto the ground because the the ground is a very uneven surface, right? If we had a single tree on the middle of a golf course, then you would see a very distinct, clear line um, of the shadow of the tree onto the ground. But where we have a very uneven ground, this these shadows kind of roll up and down and actually do a lot to describe the shape of the ground. So if you look over here, it's a bit hard to tell the shape of the ground because there's no shadows falling across the across the ground. And it looks, you know, if you zoom back here, it looks relatively flat. But if you go over here, then you can see how bumpy this ground really is because these big shadow shapes are falling across it. So if you want to simulate this look and have it be photoreal, then you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to render these shadows in a way where it feels complex because there's a lot of complexity. So there's things in front of the shadows. So you have these these uh, pieces of grass here in front of the shadows. You have um, little dips and peaks in the ground um, th all throughout. And then you have, you know, like I mentioned before, the crisscrossing of all these shadows that are going together. So that's my third observation, is that, uh, is that the shadows fall on the ground and the ground is not even. Um, and then I guess I could add as a fourth one, is that you can see right here in this area, this area right here where there's grass that comes up and breaks the shadow. So you have the, the layering effect where something is in front of the shadow, uh, which is a nice look and makes it really sit into that uh, scene. The next thing that I want to look at uh, are these edges right here up at the top. So if you, if you can see these uh, trees up here uh, versus these trees down here, um, there's a quality difference in the trees. And I'll show you when we take a look at your work, I'll show you what it, what it really looks like. So um, these leaves right here have a bunch of holes in them. Okay, so this is a masking or your edges. And so the, 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 the observation that I'm making here is that when these trees are up against the sky, then we see all these little holes in these trees. But when we see those same trees against a dark background, we don't see those same holes. Okay, so uh, that's one observation, having nice complex edges and uh, having the light poke through when we're seeing them through the sky. So that's another observation. If that doesn't make sense to you now, then um, I will show you in your work and you'll, you'll get to, it'll really make sense when you take a look at it that way. Um, and then also the last thing, last observation that I'm going to make is that um, that of the, the unified color that I see here. So when I look at this, nothing really stands out as a sore thumb. They all kind of fit into the scene. And um, part of that is the edges and the shadows and the integration. But a big part of that is the color grading of these different trees. So it's very possible that you cut these trees out and you put them over here. And immediately they feel like they're too dark because there's a slight, you know, like I mentioned before, lighting change that happens from the right side of the screen down to the left. So you'd have to compensate for that in your color grading. So um, that's something uh, that, like I said, again, we're going to take a look at for your work. So with that, those are my observations of, of uh, this plate. When, before you start your work, it's really important that you sit down and you analyze the, the plate or the footage or the image that you're working with and do make a list, identify all of these things. And that's why all of these 
um, DMP challenges start out with observation because it's so, so important to be able to do that. All right, so now on to our evaluation section of this feedback video. So I've compiled a list of five different things I'm going to be using to evaluate your work. I've also uh, categorized your work into these five different categories. And just again, like we usually do, I put your work into one of these categories because I feel like it best represents that category for need of improvement. That doesn't mean that your work doesn't have multiple of these areas of improvement. Um, that's why I provide this list. You can self-evaluate. So look at that one thing that I'm pointing out on your work and then use this video to self-evaluate your work. So, and then once you identify that, you can make your work better. And just remember, at the end of this video, I'm going to be doing a little demo on how to address some of these issues. So the first one our, on our list is uh, repeating patterns. So I have uh, David here who, um, let's take a look. So if we take a look here, I'm seeing this uh, V shape right there and this V shape here. Um, it is, you grab this area, moved it over here and scaled it down. So, so there is a scale difference. However, there is an issue with that same pattern. You're gonna see that pattern with larger shapes uh, more than others. So like where I see this V, I can see it there too. So you just wanna be able to change this up. And like I said, on the demo portion, I'm going to show you some techniques of how to change up some of these patterns so it's not so uh, noticeable. So uh, next one we're going to look at is Victor's. So uh, for Victor, you can see this guy right here and this little thing right here where these uh, two light marks surrounded by this dark area. And you see that over here, the same tree. So... You just want to make sure that you go through, take a look at your work, zoom out, um, and and analyze it, and say, okay, what is the, what is the repeating pattern? So I see this V. There's that little V there. I see this guy, which is the same as this one. Then light, dark, dark, light, dark, dark. So yeah. So I think what you would have to do here, Victor, on this one, is I see that you scaled it down. Uh, and that is a bit of a change. However, I think you're going to have to mix it up a little bit. So that's like grab this tree, put it here, grab this tree, put it on this side. So, so grab different trees and arrange them in a different order because, uh, and I see that you've done some work on top, but I don't think it's significant enough to be able to break the pattern that I'm seeing here. So, like I said, you could take it two ways. You just copy this whole group, move it over, try to do some paint work on top to try to make it different. Um, but probably the better thing would be is to cut one out, put it there, cut another one out, put it there, and try to assemble something that is truly unique. And then you don't have to worry about the repeating powder, pa pattern. All right, so the next one is uh, Sergey. So this one is just a bit more, uh, a bit more subtle but it's that same area where it's two, these two little light things surrounded by a dark area, um, dark area there. So uh, just watch out for those repeating patterns. Okay, so the next one is uh, lighting direction, and I can't pronounce your name because I don't speak Chinese, so I apologize for that. Um, but for this one, remember in our um, observation section of the video we talked about how the lighting direction changes by the time it gets over here so you can see this tree this one is in shadow complete shadow on this side however it's right up against these trees that are in full light right there in front so uh, just be careful when you're putting things right next to each other uh, it's a bit more obvious if you had it somewhere in here and it, the lighting direction wasn't quite right, right you may miss it uh, however, if you're putting them right next to each other, it's it's going to stand out. So these, like I said, these are front lit. This one is side lit on there. Um, uh, and the next one, uh, Tam Tamina. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, your image is a bit low res, so it's uh, just a little bit difficult to evaluate. But I did want to point out the same issue here where these trees are being front lit and then these trees on this left-hand side 
are being, uh, they're dark on, on this side. So there's a different lighting source. When you look at these two, you can tell this is one lighting scenario. This is a different lighting scenario. Okay, so after lighting, so we're now on to shadows. So I have uh, Emilio here, and um, these shadows right here are a bit simple. And like I said, even these, you added this chunk right here, even these have these kind of like lost and found shadow shapes. But then these isolated trees that you added here have, um, have these really solid um, uh, shadow shapes where there's not really anything that's obscuring them. It's not rolling over the, the, the terrain and, um, and they're isolated. So I think if you were to give it this kind of treatment, you'll have to uh, put these trees together or um, do a bit more like we see, you know, these are kind of isolated trees, but then they're kind of like rolling. It's a bit of a different perspective over here, but you can see that, you know, they're just kind of rolling over the surface. Um, and so these would be dramatically improved if you uh, put some variation in there. So right now, they're pretty dark too. So, uh, so if you go one, two, three, those are the strongest looking shapes in this whole image. And so it draws the eye right to those. So be a bit more subtle and uh, do a little lost and found shape on those, um, those shadows. All right, so the next one we're gonna look at is uh, masking. So um, uh, Yi's here, um, he, um, make sure that you stitch the image together so that we have a complete image. But um, on this, you can see these shapes are pretty blocky. And so uh, you'll want to better represent uh, what's going on in the plate um, where these are really kind of chunky. So like I said, in the, in the training part of the video, I'll go over some selection techniques uh, to help you out with that. Um, so uh, these guys here, you can see like in here, um, this is a pretty, like for the one, two, three, these three trees for Carlos, you can see that it's pretty uh, cut out. So there's a blue sky back there and a tree and there's a pretty hard line in between those two. So if you look at these trees over here, the, there's not really, that's part of the plate, there's not really that hard line there um, that you see in these trees. These trees kind of have this, um, the light coming through them a lot. There's not a real harsh line there, uh, but that's what I see here is this harsh line. Um, also, um, there's an issue with uh, the light wrap that's happening. So the part of this line is for two things. One thing, uh, number one, it's because I'm not seeing the holes through the trees. Uh, it's opaque, like that tree is 100% opaque, and then it's sky. So these are not opaque trees. So that's one, we don't see the sky through them. And then number two is that we're not seeing the light wrap from the sky uh, because you're seeing this through and you see a sky behind it, the light is gonna wrap around um, and it's gonna make the value brighter and uh, it's going to make those edges a lot softer. So you see these edges, pretty soft. So that pretty much goes for everybody's here, Andrew has the same uh, issue with these guys. I do see a bit more of a cutting out here, but um, I think on this one, more than anything, it's missing a bit of that light wrap um, that's happening. Uh, and you have a little repeating pattern there, the top of those guys. So uh, check that out. And then uh, Caroline here, um, same issue here. Um, these are a bit cut out. Um, on this, I'm seeing some really good stuff like right down here. Um, you can see it a lot better poking through, the light poking through, that's good. It'd be better if that kind of look was put everywhere on there. Okay, and the last one here is uh, color grading. So mostly what I'm looking at here is the black values. So um, you can see the black values and the saturation. For whatever reason, when you stitch this image together, these trees over here uh, get a bit brighter 
maybe because they're in full light and uh, a little desaturated. So you can see the saturation of these trees. Um, maybe you're color grading them and adding the saturation in. I'm not exactly sure, but but uh, if these are exactly color graded from here, which they appear to be, these this value is dark, overall darker. So lifting the value would be kind of number one, and then desaturating it just slightly would be number two on, on all of these guys, um, especially when you have this against this. There's a pretty, um, it should all kind of like flow together. And um, just like on the plate, you know, this single tree right here doesn't stand out from all the other trees because it looks very much the same. So uh, these trees and these trees look different, same species and everything, but they're in a different position. So you're going to want to bring these trees that you've added to be more like these and less like these. So you want to transform them into that area. Okay, last one that we're going to look at is uh, is Josh. Um, this one is kind of uh, the same issue uh, with the really, really dark values, uh, these black dark values that are happening over on this side of the screen where we didn't see them in the original uh, there. Okay. So, uh, and then the, the saturation, these are really kind of green. These are kind of red values back in the plate. These are green. Uh, and so it's that kind of subtlety of color grading uh, to make it integrate. We've taken a look at everyone's work. Let's go do a little bit of a demo. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at three different things. The first thing is uh, the masking that's involved in extracting these trees and making it look natural that it sits on top of the sky or a solid background. And then we're gonna take a look at some painting methods on how to change up the variation on this tree. And also, uh, lastly, we're going to look at uh, some light, rep, light wrap techniques. So the first thing when we're talking about uh, doing masks, what I like to do, I'm going to use the lasso tool here, and I'm going to cut right down to uh, this tree. I'm going to leave a little bit of space because that's what I'm going to do with my, my paintbrush there to cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and mask that. Okay, so now I'm here. I have the big chunks taken out, and now I need to um, get rid of this stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, uh, I'm just going to go to my brushes here. So let's go to brush settings. Pull this down. Okay. So what I'm going to look for is some kind of irregular brush. So it's a bit hard to tell, um, and... Uh, from these brushes, but you you can see here the shape of this brush that's a bit irregular. This one is irregular too. So let's try this round one. It has some kind of funky edges on it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just create a brush. So here on shape dynamics, I'm going to not use the size uh, pressure control. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to use a size jitter, so I'm going to pull that up really high, and then I'm going to pull up the angle jitter. So that means each tip is going to be a slightly different size and a slightly different uh, angle, so it's going to twist the brush shape. And then I'm going to go down here to scattering, and I'm going to pull that up just a little bit. So now you can see the preview here is getting a little bit kind of crazy. Um, I will turn off the... the, the uh, pressure sensitivity on uh, the the transfer on how if I put a brush stroke down it gets a bit lighter if I'm using a light pen touch I'm gonna turn that off because when I'm doing masks you will think in Photoshop that you're doing these really amazing masks and then when you put it against the background you have all these pieces that you missed because this transfer is on so what you're gonna want to do is turn that off uh, and then this is the the brush shape that it's giving us here. So that's what we're going to want to keep. Okay. So I'm going to go in here um, and start uh, taking away some of these pieces here. So let's uh, invert that. 
Okay, so this is the method I'm using here as I'm using a brush to cut out this tree, okay? And I'm not using, like I said, I'm not using the pressure sensitivity on the brush. Um, let's turn that up all the way. There we go. So I'm cutting out the tree. And what this is doing is it's giving me an irregular edge um, to work with here, a kind of a natural edge. If you, uh, it's very, very tedious to go through and cut things out, um, especially vegetation. But when you do a really good cutout and it does take time, then you're going to have a much, much better result. Okay. So that's getting in a little bit too close there. So you can see that's my technique there for cutting that out, okay? Uh, something also that you can do is you can put a solid uh, background, make it kind of a neutral gray color, and then put that behind your thing, and then look at all this junk that's left over that you didn't realize was there. So, uh, and it'll come back and haunt you. And so just putting a solid color background there where, you know, before I had this against white uh, or this blue background. So all these little alpha wispy edges is the same color as the sky. So you can't really see it until you put it against something different. So this is a good technique for uh, ensuring that you are getting rid of things. Okay. So definitely using the brush. So I use the, the lasso tool to take out the big chunks. And now... I'm using a brush to go in and do that. So uh, different things that you can do uh, if you wanted to also make a selection. So you can see this is kind of the manual method here, but it's going to give you the best results because it's going to, you know, give you the best edges here. Okay, so that's me taking a chunk out using the brush techniques to do that. So now the other, the other technique that I was just about to mention, um, you can use a, a selection tool um, here. So if you, you could even start out doing that. Let's create that selection tool. Oops. Let's go back. Okay. So you can see that I did a selection um, on this thing, which actually got me where I needed to go a lot faster because it just took out the sky completely, but it has left an edge. You can see this white edge. So if I were to go through here and um, use my brush to start cut cutting things out, then I start eroding into the tree just a bit. So what you start to get, especially with, with trees that, are, um, that have a lot of light coming through them, where there's a lot of light wrap, if you're trying to get rid of all of that light wrap, then, then it's going to um, it's gonna look kind of funny. So um, let me just show you. So looks perfect here, right? So let's zoom out. And then let's take this tree and then let's put it against a dark surface here. Okay, so there, you can see that looks awful, right? Looks great. So it looks awful, looks great. And the reason is, is because these have little wispy edges that are blue, you can't tell. But then once it's against a dark background, it looks bad. So, um, so when you're masking, you kind of have this issue. And, and if I'm going to leave it against that blue sky, you know, and, I, and I'm not breaking this into layers that's going to be used in a projected map painting, then I could just leave this the way it is. Perfect. But if I'm going to grab this guy and put it here, then I need to do something about it. So some of you guys have taken trees that were up against the sky and then put them against other dark trees, and you're getting this kind of effect. So, but like I said, if I were to go in and try to get rid of all of these uh, white shapes, then um, it's going to give me, it's going to give me a little bit of grief in that it's going to, like this, um, it's like you can't really see. 
my pointer here. So this guy right here, um, it's sticking up here. It's nice, it's delicate, it's small. But if I get rid of all that white and the light wrap on it, then it's going to destroy that shape. So you get this kind of eroding into your shape if you're trying to get rid of all these edges. So a method for doing that is actually to paint into this area. And so you're covering up the light edges instead of, sh uh, uh, you know, shrinking your tree down in order to get rid of those edges. So here we go. I'm going to create, I'm going to create an edge there. I'm going to, um, so I just created a layer and I, uh, and I kind of nested it or constrained it to just this layer here. So it's only going to show up in this layer. And then I'm going to use my brush tool and I'm going to just sample around these pixels. Um, but as you can see, my paintbrush is really solid and kind of sticks out. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take my brush and I'm going to put in this, uh, this other thing here called uh, this other brush setting, brush dynamics. And so hue, saturation, and brightness. I usually do hue 2, saturation 2, and then uh, brightness 3. And then make sure that this is checked, apply per tip. So now... Um, I have this uh, quite irregular, um, you can see it as I'm doing it up close here. Every tip is different, so it gives me some variation. And it kind of gives this a little bit of noise pattern, and so it matches better. So if I turned this off and then just did it, it all becomes one solid color, right? So uh, using the color dynamics is a really good uh, is a really good technique for making your brush strokes kind of disappear. So uh, here we go. So I'm going to sample, and I'm just going to paint into these. I'm just paint. I'm just selecting the the surrounding um, pixel color. So I keep sampling. I keep sampling. Make all those white areas kind of disappear. Okay. It's got a little So the brush tip is giving me some variation. I'm getting some variation from the the selection of colors that I'm making here. And uh, and with all that, it's going to give me kind of a natural, uh, natural look to it. Okay, so there we go. So I've just done that that tip right there. So I'm going to turn on and off this layer, and you can kind of see the difference. Okay, so looks nice against that background and then looks awful and that's just with some painting around the edges when you use that brush that has the varying tip and you're sampling around the image it will take care of that so now you can take a tree that was up against a light sky and now put it against a background that is dark okay so let's say we want to do the inverse of that okay so we we're going to take this off we're going to want to bring up this tree <clears throat> so now we're in a bit of a different position because these edges right here, these look great. Uh, these edges over here were against a dark background. So how do we make this tree look like it's against a light background? So we're going to go back um, to, our, um, to our brush settings. We're going to turn off color dynamics. So now we're just painting into the mask here. And so I'm going to... Uh, so a lot has to do with that edge. So I'm going to make a little bit of an edge here. We don't want it to look like it's cut out. So I'm going to try to eliminate all of that kind of distant forest color. Trying to eliminate all the little wispies in the alpha because it's always, always important to, um, <clears throat> to get rid of those nasty alpha uh, wispies that are created from uh, these brush strokes. <clears throat> okay, so number one, I've made an irregular edge. 
there. And now what I want to do is I'm going to just make my brush kind of small and I'm going to like just cut in, cut into that edge and just provide some holes. Okay. Because with trees, when you get out towards the edge, it's not going to be, it's not an opaque thing. It's only opaque because you have the layering of the, the, the needles or the, the leaves or something that's going to make it opaque here in the middle. <clears throat> but even in the middle here, you see that there's some holes. So, um, so around the edge is really where you're going to start to see the holes poking through. So here I am, I'm poking some holes um, through that. And so now that I've poked some holes in it, what I can do is I can create uh, another layer here. I'm going to create a, uh, I'll go over here to another brush here. And instead of this kind of uh, snaggly, uh, strange brush, I'm going to pick a really soft brush here. And then um, I'm going to select the color of the sky. Okay. And then I'm going to paint into really softly. Let's do uh, transfer here. And let's uh, erase this. get kind of a lighter color okay and so I'm just gonna just do like a little bit of a tap here so I'm testing it I'm putting it down I'm testing it I'm looking for feedback on my brush stroke and so I'm gonna bring it down to a really low opacity uh, and I'm gonna I just deleted my test so now I'm gonna, that really light layer, okay? I'm putting it in there like that, okay? So if I turn it on and off, you can see that it's just a little bit lighter value and it's the sampling the color of the sky onto the tree. So that's the light wrap part. So it's wrapping the light into it. Okay, so just as a review, the things that we've gone over so far in this demonstration is uh, a good way to mask, and you can do that with paintbrushes is a method, which I think is a really good method for these trees, gives you a natural edge. The second thing that we went over is uh, painting into that edge so that it will look good um, on your tree when we, uh, when we pull it down into these other areas because you can see how bad that looks so if you paint into that edge then it will look good against a dark background and then we would learn how to make it look good against a light background here so the last thing that we're going to do in this uh, demonstration is how to provide some variation so in the review it was these two branches that stuck out on a bunch of people's um, on their work and so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to annihilate these two little branches and try to provide some variety within this tree so there again I'm going to use my uh, different brush tip and so uh, it's like the number 10 here that I have and so I'm going to turn on my transfer I'm going to turn on the color dynamics 2, 2, and 3 and then I'm going to put in that scattering and uh, uh, shape uh, dynamics, okay? So th there's a bunch of stuff going on there. If I felt like I needed to, I could put uh, some texture into it, but I don't think I need to at this point. So um, I'm going to uh, create a new layer here, okay? Make my uh, brush tip a bit small. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some free painting here on this. So this is, uh, and I just as a side note here, you want to make sure that when you're doing this free painting that you do it at the very end of your work. So you wouldn't start out painting right into the tree. You wouldn't paint a tree from scratch. You would uh, cut it out. You'd put it on the background. You'd integrate it. You'd, you'd relight it. You'd do all this kind of stuff with adjustment layers. And then it's only the very last step that you do this paintwork, okay? It's very important that you do your paintwork at the end because then you're working from a base that's correct. Um, and 
your painting knowing what the final is going to be looking like instead of painting and then color correcting things. So it's just a process of, of operation, but then also it holds you back from getting into paint too early, okay? So anytime you paint, it's degrading the image and it's at some point, if you paint too much into it, it's just not gonna look real anymore. Um, and so, and then you're in a position of being like, I painted a bunch of stuff, it doesn't look real, so now I need to get a new photo and put it on top of my paint. So what you need to do, just leave the paint until very last. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna sample colors here, and I'm just going to, uh, let's change this opacity to all the way up on my brush. I'm gonna sample this, and then I'm just gonna paint into this area here. So I'm gonna sample in the black and I'm just gonna just annihilate this little shape here, okay? And this is where you're kind of like noticing the little patterns that happen um, throughout the, the tree and you try to uh, kind of match those patterns. And there's a bit of a crispness that you're going to lose um, but that's why you work at uh, double, double the resolution, because if you're working at at least double the resolution, then what you're going to be getting is that you can paint a bit loose um, on uh, on this level. But then when you zoom out, it's going to sharpen up. Okay, and uh, you know also if you're doing projections, then you want to make it so that um, you know when there's some some filtering that's going on that it will um, that it will keep the integrity of your of your image okay so um, I'm doing this uh, sampling different things making sure that I am hitting the highs and the lows of uh, of the different shapes uh, of, di of the different values, pardon me. So the really high highlights, and I'll sample the darker the darker values here. And so now that shape starts to disappear, okay? So now it's not really that recognizable. And then I can step back and I can evaluate and be like, what more can I get rid of? I'm gonna chop off these guys here, and I'm gonna, you know, make it a bit of a bigger, a branch through here, okay? So that's one method that you can use. You can also uh, use clone, any kind of cloning. So if you sample here, and then I'm gonna sample this, and I'm gonna move this over here. So the thing that you're fighting against though, when you use cloning, you can clone from one tree into another tree. That would help with without the re to prevent the repeating patterns. Um, but if you're doing it within the tree, then you're getting a repeating pattern on that. So then what you're gonna have to do is come back through and just do a little bit of custom paint work and uh, paint into that tree. And now that, that area that I had here and here, now they appear, um, now they appear different because I went on top and did some custom, custom paint work, okay? Okay, so uh, when you're talking about relighting the tree now, then um, what you need to do is you need to move the light from, uh, from over on this side to around this side, right? So a good way to do that is with your, uh, with your brush strokes. So I'm going to take this top part here and I'm going to move the lighting around. So I'm going to increase the scattering just a little bit. So you can see the display down there. And uh, now I'm using a slightly different technique. So instead of like uh, hand painting the, the, those, those different shapes, I'm letting the scattering of the brush kind of provide some variety. And so I'm going to paint around here. So now it's a bit more uh, front lit. 
uh, and then I'll decrease the scattering here and then come in and kind of just do just a little bit of custom work. There. Okay, so now I'm trying to follow the same shapes and patterns that I see. Make sure that there's these little dark areas that, that you continue keeping those dark areas in there. And you start filling this area out. You know, add some little pingy highlights, which I'm doing right now, around the side. Okay. Okay, so now uh, if I turn that on and off, you can see that it's kind of brought that around to that side. And if we zoom out here, then, and then let's just do a quick comparison. So we're looking at the top of that tree. So I'm going to move it over to this guy here. And uh, let's compare. So that little area is gone. I have some bad cloning. You can see here this kind of echoing thing that's going on. So if I were to uh, just get rid of that. And we'll do a little scattering. Bring that light around. Okay, so now if we do a quick comparison, then we can see that uh, it's starting to look a bit different. And even if I wanted to break up some of these shapes just a bit more. Okay, so yeah, so I'm looking at, I didn't do the whole tree, so, um, but I'm looking at, you know, this area right here compared to, um, let's uh, go back here. So I'm looking at this area here uh, compared to this area right here. And those to me feel a bit like, those feel different uh, to me. There's maybe a little area here that's repeating, but that's the kind of analysis that you want to do is you want to make sure it's done. So uh, yeah, so I hope that was instructive. We talked about how to deal with the trees in a bunch of different ways, the edges, painting into them to get variety. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to take this information and take it back to the DMP challenge, redo it, and then put it back on the website for everyone to see that you are uh, good at self-evaluating, noticing photographic cues and being able to incorporate that into your work and improve. And that's the whole point of these DMP challenges is to always be improving, work on basic fundamental tasks that make really that make up being a good artist.